With the recent release of Battlefield 2042, I figured I'd try to build something more budget oriented and see if it's able to game at 1080p in the newest titles. This is the first time that EA or really any game has put this many players on a multiplayer stage. There's 128 people in the game. So you got 64 on each team. That is a huge map and a lot going on at one time. So let's see if this little budget build can get it done. Normally I have a specific outline of how I do the videos. I like to outline the parts that are in the build, show some B-roll of actually building the PC, and then do the benchmarks and my final notes. Well, today I decided to do things a little backwards. I wanna start with the benchmarks, and then I'm gonna do the build, and then I'll talk about the parts. So real quick, just so you have an idea, this is a Ryzen 5 3600 and a GTX 1660 Super. That just gives you a little insight into the build. But let's take a look at the benchmarks. The first game I played is Apex Legends because I absolutely love the game and I can't stop playing it, so why not throw it in my benchmarks? Plus, it's a very fast-paced game with a lot of action going on, so it's a good representation of stress on the GPU. On high settings for Apex Legends at 1080p, I got around 100 FPS. You can see in the corner of the screen here exactly how it's running. What I thought was interesting is I had 97% GPU utilization, as you can see. Now that's really good. You want your GPU to be fully utilized because that means you're not CPU bound. What I was surprised about is that the CPU is at 20% utilization. Something I've noticed is recently, games in the past like year or two have really started to use those multi-core and multi-threaded CPUs in their games. So you'll see a trend starting to happen here. The next game I played is Battlefield 2042, of course. Now, I ran it on the low settings because that's what the system recommended. When you boot into the game, it does your auto settings. I really just leave it at that and see what I can get. I try to get close to that 100 FPS number, but it's really hard sometimes. Battlefield 2042 on low settings at 1080p ran around 80 to 90 FPS. Now, on that one, my CPU was at 60% utilization. My GPU was only at 78% utilization. And that's at 1080p on low settings. I probably could have bumped the settings up to medium or high and it would have put more stress on the GPU, but the system might not have been able to run it. I just wanted to even see if the game could be played on this system, and it can, so I was impressed enough with that. Next game I played is Call of Duty Warzone. All the settings were pretty much on normal or off. If it's a toggle between on or off, I switched it off. I got around 80 FPS, give or take a little bit. You can see on the screen here in the corner with the MSI Afterburner specs. My GPU utilization was at 98%, which is awesome. My CPU utilization was at 44%. I was kind of surprised at that, but I understand the Battle Royale maps have a lot of CPU utilization because there's a lot going on. Now, this one I was really surprised about. Marvel's Avengers is the last game I played. I played it on high settings and I got around 75 FPS. It's not fantastic, but it's pretty decent. And this is 1080p still. My GPU was at 99% utilization. So all the stress is on the GPU. Well, not so much because my CPU was at 65% utilization. This is an average through the whole run. So some things I was really surprised about is the high CPU utilization on these games. Now, I understand when you lower settings and stuff like that, but Apex and for Avengers, I had high settings on those and I still had high utilization on the CPU. So what's going on with that? I don't know if the CPU should be that high of utilization when I'm just playing a game. Oh, and also all these screen recordings were done using a separate system. So don't count that in the CPU utilization numbers. The computer was played by itself. I had a capture card hooked up to a totally separate system. So the computer didn't even know it was being recorded. Now in my backwards fashion that I'm doing, let me show you how the computer came together and then I'll talk a little bit about the parts and why I chose them.
Now I remember why I build in this case so much. It's so easy to build in. It's actually really nice for the price and the airflow is incredible. Like it checks all the boxes for me. Oh, right. So let's talk about the parts. First is the processor. I use the Ryzen 5 3600. This is part of AMD's Zen 2 architecture, which is a generation old now, by the way but it's six cores and 12 threads, and it boosts to 4.2 gigahertz. Now I chose this CPU because I think it's a real good representation of what a lot of people have out there. I mean, it was a very popular CPU when it came out. It was a really good price for performance. And I mean, it has a lot of multi-cores to it, six cores and 12 threads. That can get you streaming and gaming, and you can even do content creation with that. So I think it's an all around great CPU, and it's still viable today. As always, I use 16 gigabytes of RAM in all my builds because that's really all I have here in the studio and it's indicative of what everyone has in their computers. This is 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro at 3200 megahertz. 16 gigs used to be the standard, but it seems like 32 gigs is becoming the standard now. I don't really know. Let me know down in the comments. Do you run 16 or 32 in your own PC? For the motherboard, I used my trusty standby. This is the MSI B550M Mortar Wi-Fi. I really like the look of it. It's actually one of the only AMD uh, micro ATX boards that I have, so I wanted it to go in this case. But you can't go wrong with this board because it's B550, it's got Wi-Fi built in, it's PCI 4.0 for the graphics and for the M.2, the top M.2 slot. I did an entire review on this board and if you wanna check it out, I'll put it up here and you can take a look after this video, obviously. For the all important graphics card, I use the ASUS ROG Strix GTX 1660 Super Advanced Edition. I don't really know what makes it advanced. Anyway, what really gets me with this GPU is the look of it is absolutely incredible, especially for a more budget friendly card. It's got the BIOS switch, so it actually has two BIOSes. BIOS? BIOSes? I don't know. It's got two settings. You can flip the switch on the front of it. Don't flip it while it's on, by the way. Turn your system off, flip it, then turn it on. Does that make sense? You can put it on quiet or you can put it on performance. I don't really care about noise, so I always put it on performance. For the power supply, it's the EVGA 600BQ. That's an 80 plus bronze. It's partially modular, which is really nice. I recommend at least a 600 watt power supply these days. For the storage, I'm using the Crucial P1 NVMe SSD. It's a one terabyte version. I didn't go with a PCIe 4.0 drive, even though the board can handle it. It's just not really worth it when all the other components are budget oriented. But I chose the terabyte of storage instead of a smaller one because games these days need big storage. In fact, I would say get a terabyte for your operating system and maybe a few games and then throw another terabyte in there for all your other games. Finally, for the case, I absolutely love this thing. As I said, this is the Cooler Master MB311L ARGB Micro ATX case. I did tons of videos using this thing. I've done videos with CPU coolers. I've done different builds in this. I did my Cyberpunk build. I really had fun with that and I thought it was like this neat retro style. Uh, I actually use this graphics card in the build. So if you wanna check that one out, I'll leave it linked below as well. Anyways, those are all the parts that I picked for this thing, the reasons that I chose it. I just really wanted to build something that was more budget friendly and would show what most people are running with. I'm thinking about doing more testing on Battlefield with this setup. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Should I keep playing Battlefield with this and try different settings and see how much I can max it out? Should I try overclocking the graphics card? Or should I just say, forget it, tear the thing apart and build something with 12th gen Alder Lake? I think the computer does really well in gaming as you saw in the benchmarks at the beginning. Battlefield's a little iffy for me because with those big 128 player maps, as I said, the CPU is really getting bogged down. Um, I'm wondering if I can try it with something a little bit bigger. I'm curious to see how that'll work out. But I know more cores is always better. Hope you enjoyed my budget build. Oh, and by the way, I really just wanna thank everyone that keeps coming back and you know, all of you that really take time to watch the videos on the channel, comment on the videos, like the videos. I really do appreciate it. It's nice to know that my input is valuable to you and that you're willing to keep coming back and seeing what's going on here in uh, Danny's tech channel. And as I always say, I'm Danny and I'll see you next time. Come alive. We come alive.